So just fair warning before we start, we're learning more and more about COVID-19 every day. Everything we're going to talk about is subject to change as we learn more about this virus. What we do know at this time is patients with hypertension are at increased risk of dying from COVID-19. Why does this link exist? You know, hypertension is a risk factor in other diseases such as ACS or stroke. Why in this virus is hypertension a risk factor for dying? Some have postulated that it's not the hypertension itself that puts people at risk, but rather it's the medications that they take, specifically ACE inhibitors and ARBs. To understand the reasoning behind this, we have to look at a little bit of biochemistry, but I promise we'll keep it simple and we'll keep it fun. So angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 acts on the cell to increase blood pressure. Angiotensin converting enzyme 2 acts on angiotensin 2 and converts it into things that do not increase blood pressure. ACE2 is frequently thought of as the good guy in the cell. However, COVID-19 we know binds to ACE2 and that's its ticket into cells. Now let's look what happens when we insert an ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitors act here and block the actions of angiotensin converting enzyme 1, which prevents angiotensin 2 from being formed. ACE2 no longer has a substrate to work on, however the body continues to produce more ACE2. COVID-19 sees this as a bunch of free tickets to get into the cell. Now, angiotensin receptor blockers don't make so much sense because they act here, blocking angiotensin 2 from binding to the cell. Since angiotensin 2 is no longer binding to the cell, the amount of angiotensin 2 in the body will increase. That should increase the amount of substrate for ACE2 to work on, which should decrease the amount of ACE2 that I have available. So all of this is theoretical. What does the evidence show? Animal models, mostly in rats, show that both ARBs and ACEs do the same thing. However, the studies can't agree on what they do. There's a lot of studies out there that show that they both increase the amount of ACE2. There's also a lot of studies out there that show they both decrease the amount of ACE2. There's no consistency in the animal models. What about the human trials? What do they show? Well, they're all over the place as well. There's some showing that there's no change in ACE2 with the administration of an ACE or an ARB. Others show that there's changes only in certain parts of the body, not everywhere. And now even other studies show that there's increases in ACE2, but only with certain ARBs, not with all the medications. The evidence is all over the place. So what are we to do? Well, on one hand, you have theoretical conflicting data that's not patient-centered. We're looking at a surrogate markers of ACE2 levels, not patient outcomes. On the other hand, the American Heart Association and the European Society of Cardiology both recommend keeping your patients on their ACE inhibitors and their ARBs at this time, even when they're infected with COVID. So in my mind, right now, if I have a patient that comes in, even if they have COVID-19, I'm going to keep them on their ACE inhibitors or their ARBs. If you want to read more about this and see all the citations that we put in here, you can go to my website at haywoodmd.com forward slash blog to read more.